Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Jerry Rigger channel uh, where you tell me I can't do it and I'll find a way to do it. Um, today's video, oh by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, today's video is all about my Coleman 12 volt electric cooler that stopped working. Um, the cooler worked fine for a couple of years. I used it for a couple of road trips. Uh, didn't have it, you know, plugged in for a few hours at a time here and there. Um, then one holiday, I decided to go ahead and use it as a backup to my refrigerator um, since I didn't have enough room for all the food. It was Christmas or Thanksgiving or something and had had too much room or too much food and not enough refrigerator. So I thought, well, I'll just use this as kind of a little backup. Um, but after a few days, the plug got really hot and it blew the fuse. Um, so I went online um, to Amazon, found a 10-pack of fuses. These, this particular one's a 7.5 amp um, fuse, quick blow. Um, like I say, I ordered a 10-pack on Amazon. It was just as cheap as ordering a single fuse. So. Um, which turned out to be a good thing because um, replaced the fuse, plugged it back in, plug got really hot, and blew the fuse again. So uh, I got to looking at the the spring this time because when I looked at, um, well, the spring had kind of collapsed, um, so it wasn't really pushing the little button on the end of the plug out anymore. So I went ahead and stretched it back out you know put another fuse in it still got really hot um, almost seemed like this little spring had started to act as a little heating coil um, and it occurred to me that you know I work on things for a living it occurred to me that this uh, you know when I see a spring that you know is you know, a current passing through like this, I normally see a little copper wire, like say brushes on a motor. You usually see a little copper wire running through that spring. Um, so I decided to do that with this little spring. I decided to run a copper wire down through the center of it um, to carry the current as opposed to this steel spring which had overheated and probably built up some resistance when it overheated. Um, so that the, when I run the copper wire through it, it would carry the current as opposed to the, the spring itself. So here's what I did. I kind of ran the, the copper wire, you know, tied it to one end of the spring and ran it through um, the, the middle of the, the spring, tie, you know, wrapped it around the other side, um, and then ran it back through the spring again so um, basically I ran the copper wire through it twice after um, I got it and then I ran it back around and of course tied it off on the end um, so that it would you know I ran it ran it through the, the copper wire through the the center of the um, spring as opposed to on the outside just to make sure that um, the copper wire didn't interfere with the springs, you know, moving in and out. Um, and I cut off the excess copper wire. Um, I think I had just a little, maybe three-eighths of an inch uh, left over, um, which I used then um, after I, like I say, I tied it on the one end and then I tucked it back in, just the excess. Um, so it all be inside the spring. Um, being careful, trying not to cut myself here, obviously, uh, with this little razor wire, or razor that I used to tuck the copper wire back in. Um, but uh, you know, then I made sure that the uh, you know the spring still worked okay. Um, sprung in and out after I got it all done. Everything seemed to be working fine. The copper wasn't. You know, in any way impeding the, the spring from springing. Um, then I put it all back together. Um, just a little um, view here of what I, all the components look like um, on the outside. Um, so I put the fuse back in. I 
put the spring back in, put it all back together. I uh, made sure that the button was working like it's supposed to. And guess what? Everything worked just fine after that. It's been several years ago. I had to take it all apart just to make the video, but um, it's been working ever ever since. And um, I also, while I was at it, I went ahead and um, sewed on some double-sided Velcro um, to the to the plug because I always had issues with the plug. Um, you're supposed to tuck it into the side of the, the cooler and of course it always fell out um, by adding this um, double-sided velcro um, I got the idea from another cord that I had um, but by adding that double-sided velcro uh, I can now tuck it in and it will stay in place um, and so I thought I'd include that in this video as well just for anybody else who might be having the same problem um, but that's that's it. Um, apparently the the spring, like I say, was was uh, you know had built up too much resistance after it overheated and um, it was uh, causing the fuse to blow. Um, since I've done this, it's been working fine, and uh, I just thought I'd let everybody else know in case there's somebody else out there having the same problem. All right, uh, thanks again for watching the Jerry Rigger channel. Um, don't forget to like, you know, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.